the amount of sleep that we, we have varies in our lifetime. The what we call the life course. As you know, when, you, when you're born, you spend about 8% of your time asleep, right? And then as you grow older, the amount of the time you spend in sleep is less and less up to adulthood when we now refer to six to eight hours per night. But definitely if we had a five years old, we wouldn't consider six or eight hours per night to be normal, it would be longer. So there are phases of sleep during your life course. And then when we go to adulthood, we do have circumstances in life that can alter the amount of sleep we need, but also the amount of sleep we get. Um, so it is important to, to, to appreciate that there are uh, facts of life that can, can push us to sleep less and they can force us to sleep less, or um, part of, of the life when we are allowed to sleep more. And that's why I think it's a, the assessment of lifetime exposure to sleep is quite difficult to accrue in studies like the one we did. Um, there are differences also between men and women, for instance, in adulthood, that we need to consider. And in part, maybe biological, and we are at the early stage of understanding those, but maybe social or sociological. In other words, there have been interesting theories uh, explaining why when we look at the amount of, of sleep that men and women get at different ages, we find differences that vary with age. During the, the, the adulthood, at the younger age, women tend to sleep worse than men, well, particularly in terms of quality. There's a bit less quantity, but quality is bad. And it's been attributed to the different role that women have in society and the different pressures that they might uh, have to accommodate in their life. This is an interesting uh, theory that's been proven by a lot of sociology studies where women are mothers, women are workers, women become wives, then they have to look after the kids as they grow, eventually they become carers, they may retire or not. So these pressures tend to go along with the different stages of their lives, where men will be more stable in their sleeping time. And in fact, it is clear that after around the menopause, which could be retirement age, or could be when your kids leave home, um, women tend to parallel men in their quality. Um, we found in our studies that a couple of risks in women are more than in men, particularly in the cardiovascular area. For instance, the association between short sleep and high blood pressure seems to be much stronger in women than in men, particularly in, in uh, younger women than in men. And we don't know the reason for that. But we, it's interesting that when we look at women after the menopause or after the age of 60, that difference disappears, suggesting that the, the sociological theory may be right, that women under pressure, their hypertension suffers more in relation to sleep deprivation and suffers a bit less later on. At the same time, the coronary calcification studies have shown to be increased in short sleepers found that the effect is much stronger in women than it is in men. So we are at a very, very early stage of, of the pathophysiological causes of gender differences, where a sociological causes seems to be, be more established. And for those who believe in that, uh, sleep deprivation is a consequence not only of biological factors, but external cues. And one of the, the, the pressures of society that affects our sleeping time is enormous. You just think about it, your alarm clock that you need to wake up to go to work, the noise of your roads when the five o'clock in the morning is having your traffic around that wake you up, from the, the light pollution in very highly lit area at night that prevent you from falling asleep, and many others, the shift work, the pressure of society to try and pack more in your life, all these pressures are non-physiological. They are societal pressure. And I think the hypothesis in the men and women differences might have some component in that difference we pick up.